For hundreds of great shows like this one, go to onnetworks.com. Play Value is brought to you by Xbox Live Marketplace. Now, if you're a gamer of a certain age, the name Commodore probably means a lot to you. Where did Commodore start? Well, they started out years ago making typewriters. At first they made typewriters, then that eventually evolved into calculators, that eventually evolved into microchips. These microchips are used in processors. Processors ultimately are used in personal computers. The Atari 400, the Apple II. And they see that they're making the parts for computers and they think, hey, why don't we just make the whole thing ourselves? They can make the chip, they can make the computer, they can sell it for really low prices because they did it all themselves. Now Commodore, they were the first guys to have a personal computer under $1,000. They were the first guys to have a PC under $300. By bringing things in really cheap, they became totally ubiquitous and everybody had one. I mean, you could say that Commodore 64, just as much as Apple, you know, just as much as what IBM was doing, ushered in the era of the personal computer. Commodore International was a company started by Jack Trammell. Now, if you read the first half of Jack Trammell's bio, you would think this guy is an amazing guy. He's actually saved from Auschwitz by the Allies in 1945, comes to America, pulls himself up by his bootstraps, starts a company called Commodore International, becomes fabulously wealthy and successful. Then he proceeded to become one of the nastiest, shrewdest, I mean, you could almost say just most amoral business people that the video game industry had ever seen. He was famous in Silicon Valley for misleading stockholders, uh, yelling, his cutthroat business, and in Silicon Valley, that's really saying something. This is a guy you don't want to work for, but you can't discount his mark on gaming history. The reason that Commodore was able to be so successful selling such cheap product is because of the unscrupulous business practices introduced by their founder, Jack Trammell. The way Commodore could make computers really cheaply was they wanted to vertically integrate the business, control every part of it. So they would keep buying parts from suppliers and then just not pay them. And then they went bankrupt because they weren't getting paid. Commodore would swoop in, buy the company, forgive their own debt, and pass the savings on to you. And then actually control more of the means of production to produce these things at crazy prices. This wasn't an isolated incident. This happened many times over the years, and you, you kind of smack yourself on the head and you say, why didn't I think of that, you know? Brilliant, brilliant business plan. Evil, but brilliant. Commodore 64 debuted at $600, then it went down to $500 and $400. Within a year, you could get a high-end personal computer for $200, which is about $4,000 uh, adjusted for inflation, but still. Commodore would have advertisements that would say, trade in your gaming console, and we'll give you money off of a Commodore. You know why? Because a Commodore will help your kids learn, will help your kids go to college. A Commodore isn't like that mindless gaming system you have. This is happening at the worst possible time for Atari. They just released a terrible port of Pac-Man. They released E.T., generally regarded as the worst video game of all time. Why not turn in your Atari and get $100 off an awesome personal computer? So by 1983, Commodore became the first computer company to hit a billion dollars in sales before Apple, before IBM, before anybody. The Commodore 64 to this day is the most successful personal computer in the world. It sold 30 million units. Considering that, computers get more and more widespread every year. It's hard to imagine that the number one selling computer of all time is something that's 25 years old. So while the top brass at Commodore was running this very anti-video game advertising campaign, the kids who got these computers actually knew these were really super advanced video game systems and everybody just used them to play games. In 1983, Trip Hawkins founds EA and they start making great games for Commodore's great platform. Games like Hard Hat Mac, things like Archon, things like Mule, which is still regarded as one of the greatest video games of all time not for the time, of all time. And Jordan Mechner made Karanika, which was one of the first games to use rotoscoping, and he later used that to make the original Prince of Persia. We have like games like Wolfenstein, which are still around, Castle Wolfenstein, still around today. And EA made Dr. J and Larry Bird go one-on-one. -on -one. That was one of the first celebrity-endorsed games that did so well, directly led to Madden. And a lot of these games are on the Apple II also, but they're better on the Commodore and everybody knows it. Just like a traditional video game system, the Commodore 64 had exclusives, and there's games like Impossible Mission, and they're just awesome. And Commodore was my first introduction to the internet, to the web. Commodore had a modem. 
You could connect to bulletin boards and talk to other people and play games online. I used to play text-based Dungeons and Dragons on a bulletin board. In 83-84, consoles are dead, but the home video game torch is still being carried by the Commodore 64. Despite all this success, all is not well in the Commodore corporate boardroom. Our boy Jack's bad boy ways finally get him kicked out of the company by his own board of directors. Meanwhile, and in no small part due to the success of Commodore 64, Atari is hemorrhaging money. So what does Jack do? He actually buys Atari from Warner, which is trying to offload this piece of junk, and totally trashes the company. Tremel's never liked video games. He kind of built the Commodore's reputation on being more than a video game system. So the first thing he does when he gets to Atari is say, we're no longer a video game company. We make computers now. In order to do that, he has to stop manufacturing gaming consoles. So the Atari 7800 is just getting ready to launch. And what's he do? He shelves it. So his product, the Atari ST, comes out at about the same time as his old company's product, the Commodore Amiga and the two just go head to head, and there's a lot of bad blood. It's a very public feud. In a lot of ways, it mirrors what would happen with Sega and Nintendo 10 years later. In the battle of the Commodore Amiga and the Atari ST, who wins? Neither. Because shortly thereafter, Nintendo comes out and buries everybody. So Jack Trammell sees the NES as a big success, and he goes, all right, maybe I was a little hasty. I gotta get back into the video game business. What do I got lying around? I know, I got that Atari 7800 sitting in the closet. They reach in the closet and pull it out. It launches, but it's two years old. It's too little too late at this point. When your system's packed with pole position two uh, versus Super Mario Brothers and Zelda, you're really not doing yourself a favor, and quickly they were punished. The 7800 bombed, but Atari was back in games and they try again. In 1989, they had the handheld Lynx that competed with the Nintendo Game Boy. You can guess who won that fight. Atari would try again years later with the Jaguar, the first 64-bit system released, and one of just the biggest uh, console failures ever. By 96, Jack had had enough. It was time to offload this turkey that was Atari. The company has no value, but the name still does. Everyone knows the name Atari, so the name just keeps getting passed around and passed around. Bouncing from one company to another until it finally ended up with the French company Infogrames, who owns it today. The same thing that happened to Atari also happened to Commodore. They went bankrupt in the mid-90s, their name was bought and passed around until it didn't mean anything anymore, and uh, now it's owned by someone who's going to release a new high-end PC under the name Commodore G. Now people think of video games as coming to a crashing halt in 83 with the Atari 2600 and picking up in 86 with the Nintendo Entertainment System. They don't realize that Commodore was in there for those three years, filling that gap, making great games and keeping millions of kids happy and away from dangerous outdoor physical activity. Because 30 million Commodores were sold, you have 30 million people playing games. And out of those 30 million, a whole lot of them are tinkering around with it and changing the face of gaming as we know today. Rated E10 plus the T. Play the games everyone wants to play. For hundreds of great shows like this one, go to onnetworks.com.